this is our bridegroom. And so I want to say a few things about this. Um, this is a really profound passage, and it's really ultimately saying that the adulterer is all of us. And it starts first and foremost from your heart and your mind. You know, last week we learned that murder starts from your heart and your mind. It starts with hatred. It starts with bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Well, adultery starts with the desire. Desire with the desire for and the desire to give, you know, attribute to all your happiness and success and all the things that fill up your life to someone else or to something else. So when your career just completely takes off, when you get into that school, it's like, yes, now everything in my life is going to be so fulfilled. When you meet your, your, the person that you think is, going to, is your soulmate, so now everything you think your life is going to be fulfilled. That's what this passage is talking about. We say in the church, Jesus is whom we need, and he's our life and our hope. But then on Monday... On Monday, that's what we say. And that's how a bride should talk about her husband, her true husband, the real bridegroom, Jesus. But on Monday, our heart is constantly longing for some other husband, for some other lover. And this is what God is saying. And um, so one of the things I want to say to you today is I, I really you know, want, want to talk about the nature of of your spiritual life and the meaning of church. Church is the one place where this adulterous heart has to get pushed back. And worship is the place we come into the fullness of our relationship with the one who truly loves us, the true bridegroom. And the way our hearts move in worship is really the movement it has to be all the time. (laughs) 